Hi, how are you? We're about to embark on a new book. <gasps> Ready for the grand reveal? <laughs> so excited. Tonight's book, and for a while yet, is Dirk, 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 Diana Wynne Jones, Charmed Life. There it is. Now, I've never read any of Diana Wynne Jones books before. I haven't, I haven't ever read them. But I know that a couple of her books, not from this particular series, I don't think, but a couple of her books have been, they've had the whole, and excuse my pronunciation of this, I don't know, Studio Ghibli? Ghibli? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure that that sounds ridiculous if I've said it wrong. But on, um, on one of the streaming services, but yeah, Studio Ghibli, Studio G H I B L I or something like that, and it Ghibli Ghibli. Um, they've done a couple of her books. Like I know that there's Earwig on there. Um, I can't remember. The, oh, and Howl's Moving Castle. I know that's on there. Uh, let me have a look because there's a huge long list. I was I was having a look through the list of her books the other day, and look at this enormous list. Wow. So. This is part of a series called the Crestomancy series, and it's book one. Of course we have to start with book one. I don't know this time whether this is the best one in the series or not. Maybe you guys can tell me. But um, this is book one of the Crestomancy series. But yeah, there's, so there's Howl's Moving Castle. There is Earwig and the Witch. Uh, gosh, what other ones have we... There's so many different ones that I've seen on there. Is castle in the air i'm pretty sure that that is on there as well isn't it but yeah so i've seen all those ones but um none of these ones i don't think so i'm going to enjoy charmed life apparently this book was written in 1977 so it's actually as old as me so maybe i'll have some kind of bond with it because of that but anyway charmed life by diana Wynne jones this is our new book so there you go. Should we start it? We'll have a look, see what it's all about. Start with chapter one and see how we do. What I'll do, because I don't even know how long the chapters are for this one. But um, So I'll do ten minutes, or I'll stop when we get to chapter two. All right? Like I said, I don't know how long they are, but we'll see. Here we go. Cat Chant admired his elder sister, Gwendolyn. She was a witch. He admired her and he clung to her. Great changes came about in their lives and left him no one else to cling to. The first great change came about when their parents took them for it, out for the day trip down the river in a paddle steamer. They set out in great style, Gwendolyn and her mother in white dresses with ribbons, Cat and his father in prickly blue Serge Sunday suits. It was a hot day. The steamer was crammed with other people in holiday clothes, talking, laughing, eating whelks with thin slices of white bread and butter, while a paddleboat steam organ wheezed out popular tunes so that no one could hear themselves talk. In fact, the steamer was too crowded and too old. Something went wrong with the steering. The whole laughing, welky, in Sunday dressed crowd was swept away in the current from the wear. They hit one of the posts which was supposed to stop people being swept away and the paddle steamer being old simply broke into pieces. Cat remembered the organ playing and the paddles beating the blue sky. Clouds of steam screamed from broken pipes and drowned the screams from the crowd as every single person aboard was swept away through the wear. It was a terrible accident. The papers called it the Saucy Nancy disaster. The ladies in their clinging skirts were quite unable to swim. The men in tight blue serge were very little better off. But Gwendolyn was a witch, so she could not drown. And Cat, who flung his arms around Gwendolyn when the boat hit the post, survived too. There were very few other survivors. The whole country was shocked by it. The paddle boat company and the town of Wolvercote paid between them paid for the funerals. Gwendolyn and Cat were given heavy black clothes at public expense and rode behind the procession of hearses in a carriage pulled by black horses with black plumes on their heads. The other survivors rode with them. Cat looked at them and wondered if they were witches and warlocks, but he never found out. The mayor of Wolvercote set up a fund for the survivors. Money poured in from all over the country. 
all the other survivors took their share and went away to start new lives elsewhere. Only Kat and Gwendolyn were left, but since nobody could discover any of their relations, they stayed in Wolvercote. They became celebrities for a time. Everyone was very kind. Everyone said what beautiful little orphans they were. It was true. They were both fair and pale with blue eyes and looked good in black. Gwendolyn was very pretty and tall for her age. Cat was small for his age. Gwendolyn was very motherly to Cat and people were touched. Cat didn't mind. It made up a little for the empty, lost way he was feeling. Ladies gave him cake and toys. Town councillors came and asked him how he was getting on and the mayor called and patted him on the head. The mayor explained that the money from the fund was being put into a trust for them until they were grown up. Meanwhile, the town would pay for their education and upbringing. And where would you like, and where would you little people like to live? He asked kindly. Gwendolyn at once said that old Mrs. Sharp downstairs had offered to take them in. She's been ever so kind to us, she explained. We'd love to live with her. Mrs. Sharp had been very kind. She was a witch too. The printed sign in her parlour said certified witch and interested in Gwendolyn. The mayor was a little dubious. Like all people who had no talent for witchcraft, he did not approve of... Just have to breathe deep when I yawn. Hang on. <clears throat> there you go. He asked Cat how he felt about Gwendolyn's plan. Cat didn't mind. He preferred living in the house he was used to, even if it was downstairs. Since the mayor felt that the two orphans ought to be made as happy as possible, he agreed. Gwendolyn and Cat moved in with Mrs. Sharp. Looking back on it, Cat supposed that this was from a time he was from this time on that he was certain Gwendolyn was a witch. He had not been sure before. When he'd asked his parents, they had shaken their heads, sighed and looked unhappy. Cat had been puzzled because he remembered the terrible trouble there had been when Gwendolyn gave him cramps. He could not see how his parents could blame Gwendolyn for it unless she truly was a witch. But all that was changed now. Mrs. Sharp made no secret of it. You've a real talent for magic, dearie, she said, beaming at Gwendolyn, and I wouldn't be doing my duty to buy you if I let it go to waste. You must see about a teacher for you right away. You could do worse than go to Mr. Nostrum next door for a start. He may be the worst necromancer in town, but he knows how to teach. He'll give you a good ground in my love. Mr. Nostrum's charges for teaching magic turned out to be a pound an hour for the elementary grades. and a guinea an hour for the advanced grades beyond. Rather expensive, as Mrs. Sharp said. 1977, remember. She put on her best hat with black beads and ran around the town hall to see if the fund would pay for Gwendolyn's lessons. To her annoyance, the mayor refused. He told Mrs. Sharp that witchcraft was not part of an ordinary education. Mrs. Sharp came back rattling the beads on her hat with irritation and carrying a flat cardboard box the mayor had given her full of odds and ends the kind ladies had cleared out of Gwendolyn's parents' bedroom. Blind prejudice, Mrs. Sharp said, dumping the box on the kitchen table. If a person has a gift, they have a right to have it developed, and so I told him. But don't worry, dearie, she said, seeing that Gwendolyn was looking decidedly stormy. There's a way round everything. Mr. Nostrum would teach you for nothing if we found the right thing to tempt him with. Let's have a look in this box. Your poor ma and pa may have left something that might just be the thing. Accordingly, Mrs. Sharp turned the box out onto the table. It was a queer collection of things, letters and lace and souvenirs. Cat did not remember having seen half of them before. There was a marriage certificate saying that Francis John Chant had married Caroline Mary Chant 12 years ago at St. Margaret's Church, Wolvercote, and a withered nosegay his mother's must have carried at the wedding. Underneath that, he found some glittery earrings he had never seen his mother wear at all. Mrs. Sharp's hat rattled as she bent swiftly over these. Those are diamond earrings, she said. Your ma must have had money. Now, if I took those to Mr. Nostrum, but we'd get more for them if I took them around to Mr. Larkin's. 
Mr. Larkins kept the junk shop at the corner of the street, except that it was not always exactly junk. Among the brass fenders and chipped crockery, you could find quite valuable things and also a discreet notice saying exotic supplies, which meant that Mr. Larkins also stocked bat's wings, dried newts and other ingredients of magic. There was no question that Mr. Larkins would have been very interested in a pair of diamond earrings. Mrs. Sharp's eyes pouched up greedy and beady as she put out her hand to pick up the earrings. Gwendolyn put out her hand for them at the same moment. She did not say anything. Neither did Mrs. Sharp. Both their hands stood still in the air. There was a feeling of fierce, invisible struggle. Then Mrs. Sharp took her hand away. Thank you said Gwendolyn coldly, and put the earrings away in the pocket of her black dress. "'You see what I mean?' Mrs. Sharp said, making the best of it. "'You have a real talent, dearie.' She went back to sorting out the other things in the box. She turned over an old pipe, ribbons, a spray of white heather, menus, concert tickets, and picked up a bundle of old letters. She ran her thumb down the edge of it. "'Love letters,' she said. "'Is to her.' She put the bundle down without looking at it and picked up another. "'Hers to him. No use.' cat watching Mrs. Broad's sharp, Mrs. Sharp's broad mauve thumb whirring down a third bundle of letters thought that being a witch must save a great deal of time. Business letters said Mrs. Sharp. Her thumb paused and went slowly back up the pile again. Now what do we have here? She said she untied the pink tape around the bundle and carefully took out three letters and unfolded them. Crestomancy! she exclaimed, exclaimed, and as soon as she said it, she clapped one hand over her mouth and mumbled behind it. Her face was red. Cat could see she was surprised, frightened and greedy, all at the same time. Now, what was he doing right into your pa, she said, as soon as she had recovered. Let's see, said Gwendolyn. Mrs. Sharp spread the three letters out on the kitchen table and Kent, Gwendolyn and Cat bent over them. The first thing that struck Cat was the energy of the signature on all three. There's Crestomancy's signature. That is a pretty energetic signature. The next thing he saw that was that two of the letters were written in the same energetic writing as the signature. The first was dated 12 years ago, soon after his parents had been married. It said, Dear Frank, now don't get on your high horse. I only offered because I thought it might help. I still will help in any way if I can. If you let me know what I can do, I feel you have a claim on me. Yours ever? Crestomancy. The second letter was shorter. Dear Chant, same to you, go to blazes. Crestomancy. The third letter was dated six years ago, and it was written by someone else. Crestomancy had only signed it. Sir, you were warned six years ago that something like what you relate might come to pass, and you made it quite clear that you wished for no help from this quarter. We are not interested in your troubles, nor is this a charitable institution. Crestomancy. Ooh, what did your pa say to him? Mrs. Sharp wondered, curious and awestruck. Well, what do you think, dearie? Gwendolen held her hands spread out above the letters, rather as if she was warming them at a fire. Both her little fingers twitched. I don't know. They feel important, especially the first one and the last one. Awfully important. Who's Crestomancy? Cat asked. It was a hard name to say. He said it in pieces trying to remember the way Mrs. Sharp had said it. Crest, O, man, C. Is that the right way? Yeah, that's right, but never you mind who he is, my love, said Mrs. Sharp. And important's a weak word for it. I wish I knew what your pa had said. Something not many people dare say by the sound of it. And look at what he got in return. Three genuine sig signatures. Mr. Nostrum would give his eyes for those, dearie. Oh, you're in luck. He'll teach you for those, all right. So would any necromancer in the country. Right, we'll leave it there. Look, because I've gone to 13 minutes now I with all my intro bit as well. So, so far, brothers, Gwen, Gwendolyn, was it Gwendolyn? Yeah, Gwendolyn and Cat, brother and sister, living with Mrs. Sharp, who's a witch, wants Gwendolyn to train as a witch, but Mr... Nostrum is the trainer, but we've got to find something we can charm him with, something to pay him with. There are some Crestomancy signatures. I wonder if Crestomancy must be like the, the is he the big wizard? I'll read the blurb now we've done a chapter. <coughs> There's one absolute rule, said Crestomancy. No witchcraft of any kind is to be practised by children without supervision. No witchcraft? 
Gwendolyn Chant, a gifted witch in the making, has other ideas and is determined to get the better of the great enchanter. Her brother Cat, who has no magical gift, is powerless to stop her. There you go. So we'll find out tomorrow. Is Mr. Nostrum gonna train Gwendolyn? I hope so. I hope so. All right. Okay. So there we go. There's our first part. We'll do this one in parts. Like I so said, I don't know how long the chapters are going to be in this one. So there's part one of our new story, Charmed Life by Diana Wynne Jones, all part of the Crestomancy series written by Diana Wynne Jones. All right. Okay. See you tomorrow.